cool. Ooh. <laughs> what is that clicking sound? What's up, dudes? Dudettes? Well, okay, I'm gonna show you what this is. Japanese, no copyright music. Asian music, no copyright. Tube for all. It says Ronin by Jantrax. I guess. And some other stuff. And of course, I'm gonna share the link. Anyway, I just. It's 1 30 almost, but I thought I would hit record because I felt like it. I've been thinking about this today, but I got kind of preoccupied and some uh, some discussion, we'll say. <clears throat> and, um... Turn it down a little in case. It might be a little loud. Okay. <clears throat> so, let me close. Hide some things. Yesterday, in yesterday's video, we had trace some of the current flows onto this map and then this is what we got except for this orange one in Europe I believe I added I don't know if that was there I'm trying to remember it might have been there I also added arrows which so if you if we kind of just zoom in a little here, notice I added these, and notice it kind of just misses a piece over here. Okay. Oops. So like a nucleus there, a circle there generally, another nucleus there, with a general outline around here. Eddie there. So if we go like that. A general Eddie here. So this is my thoughts. I was thinking about it, like what's going on with these Eddies? I think they're just like generally filling the space like uh pixelated in a pixelated way, where as the current flows and interacts across boundaries, it's creating these eddies that then like push outward <clears throat> and occupy space and essentially fill that space leading to a pixelated eddies type of outcome like this where there's like eddy here eddy here eddy here eddy here eddy here all like gears <clears throat> eddy here eddy here then we add, add some, I was thinking about it. It's like, well, this really goes down into where this blue current goes across and goes up this way. So it's kind of, if this pink circle has a direction, it's probably going up with this blue current in the same direction as the blue current. But then up here, it's running into this green current. <clears throat> Let me, one second. Fit on screen, running into this green current that was coming from North America off of this thing. This is jet stream we were talking about. They're going across, running into over here in this area, but like out of width. <clears throat> that then um, led to this pink current basically developing where it cuts in, it cuts in instead of going forward straight, like in direct opposition basically, it, it goes at an angle so it starts going more at an angle and more until it's actually get flowing with this green current and this blue current like this notice that this goes this way around and then over here we do, we have the same thing happen where this blue current goes across and then this orange eddy which is centered 
on the Kursk Magnetic Anomaly, which is interesting. <clears throat> Making um, some relationships to uh, other aspects of my research that I haven't really thought about very in depth yet, but definitely relates things. Um, but then this eddy goes around, but as it goes this way, this blue current, some it basically does the same thing as over here. It runs into it uh, with the, like a certain amount going through like this blue going this way, cutting across and going through. <clears throat> In a similar way, some of it off of this orange goes across as this pink that ran into Atlantis, as I was discussing. <laughs> Potentially shoving material to Cusco. In a huge landslide. I don't know. I don't know the geology there specifically to like determine how possible that is. <clears throat> Gonna have to really look at the details, but um, it's something I just think would be really cool. So I, anyway, not don't hold this as some like absolute must be thing from a scientific perspective. At least in this moment, maybe someday it is. Wouldn't that surprise you, person who's doubting that potential? Like, at least not just have it be neutrally like maybe Let's, maybe maybe you know better okay we'll see <clears throat> pardon me people that know better in some ways just not the ways that I know better we all have our areas sure Anyway, before I go into some of that rant, I don't have much time, so we gotta fucking go. So we got we got this eddy here that's basically going around, running into this eddy here and bending off of it. So it's creating a mountain chain between them. It's kind of what I'm thinking. These two eddies lead to a mountain chain here. Like if we go to the top uh, graphical map, like this one. Like there's an eddy nested in this space that goes down here, across here, and up that way. And like around here, pretty much. Probably backing, like backstop of um, Norway, Finland, and etc. I forget what this is called. <clears throat> Uh, like the overall area. Is it Scandinavia? Am I insane? Okay. Yes. I didn't want to say it and sound ridiculous if it wasn't it. But anyway, backstop there. Backstop created by between the eddies here. Down here is like a bottom boundary. Here is a left boundary eddy centered on Kursk magnetic anomaly. centered on that thing which is like here believe it or maybe it was like here I think it was like this it's kind of like an arm here that's kind of like an arm over here but opposite like that then crosses 
I believe this Kursk Magnetic Anomaly is here. It's not quite center. If it's there, it might be over there. I, let's, let's find its coordinates. I go guessing. Let's just find it. <clears throat> Good enough. There's a something. Okay, that's, pre that's pretty centered. That is centered. Relatively. I mean, it's a little down. Let's see. How close was this other one? It's, it's even further south. Pretty similar location. But it's much larger. These are just where mines are. So I, I guess it's... Like, if we look at the... If this is back up. It's where this eddy was in the magnetic anomaly map, which is interesting. Where current went this way, around, <coughs> and wrapped in here, pretty much. <coughs> Anything that didn't go out this way or out that way, that wrapped in inside this boundary along the blue paths went up and in but then it ran into resistance over here and wrapped around and swirled in to make the Kursk magnetic anomaly here I'm mousing at a point of 5435 <clears throat> let's see where that is Around there. Much more centered. That's much more centered. <clears throat> right there. Okay. Point is, Eddie there, that seems to have been going this way on the surface, because the other way underneath was going this way. At least that's what I've interpreted it. I mean, it had to, because this current's going this way. And it's literally just going off of it. Over here, it's bending around. <clears throat> so this current's going this way. And it's going this way. I guess I could deflect off it and go here. <clears throat> But then this, <clears throat> if that's the case, then it would be potentially feeling a current out this way that's interacting with another current coming in. Because <clears throat> I kind of just ended the road here, if you will. Like it went, goes in, it wraps around, and loops in. And then, it, like, other things happen, like, current goes this way, blah, 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 blah. But in terms of everything here, it it's kind of the end of the road. <clears throat> where undercurrents wrapped in here, swirled in here. <clears throat> if they are undercurrents in full, I mean, it might be that they truly are through the crust. And it's not necessarily has distinguishably only undercurrents doing this. I mean, this is not in Pakistan. <clears throat> so it's definitely undercurrents did this. It's just not in Pakistan. Nothing. There's a straight nothing. Although it's subtly. Like, <clears throat> if you're looking for it, the features are subtly influencing the terrain. It's just very subtle. Because it was an undercurrent. <clears throat> Although maybe... The 
undercurrent aspect of it here relates. To the depth where maybe it was happening at some like the the Tethys kind of thing. <clears throat> Where basically it was on the on <clears throat> some under crust, like the oceanic crust kind of layer. I don't know. Okay, let's keep going though, because I wanted to point some cool things out. <clears throat> So then, what did I draw here? Oh yeah. So now I got this. <clears throat> and I started looking around like, okay, this one's going in here. This one's wrapping around. So that's why I kind of figured this is clashing with this. These are clashing, going up and down, clashing, creating mountains. And then it's going up here, where then it goes in this direction. Across here, down. This makes sense <clears throat> to me. So this is probably the surface current, whether or not an undercurrent went the other way, I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, that's that's what I've been saying. Just based on everything, <clears throat> it's certainly possible I could get some of the directions of the currents wrong, especially peripherally and things that I just kind of moved on from like that. Like that is definitely I could have got that direction of the eddy wrong <clears throat> i don't know where it would be seated from let's look at it again if there's an eddy here in this and going this way it would have to have an inlet feeding the eddy That's like going in that direction, so like there's no this is not an inlet. <clears throat> Unless it is. <clears throat> Maybe it is. Like across this way. I ran into current this way and shoved it up, but then it ran into current this way. Kinda wrapped in, but then other current wrapped in the other way, so it really created a more complex shape than just like an eddy shape. <coughs> so. Hmm. Okay. But what do you see when you look at this? Do you see what I see? this band going across let's just draw it in another another layer Okay, we've got generally though, like a, an eddy here. This eddy that's leading to a offshooting current. It's pretty much coming out of Hudson Bay like that. Going this way. But it goes up and across this region. And it goes down and in this region. And just generally goes across. Probably uh, more than this. Like, <clears throat> Alright. And then. 
let's just use another color, not specifically red, but there's a current coming in here, this green one, that cuts across this and goes over here. <coughs> but it doesn't just cut across, it also fails to get across, leading to this. <clears throat> and then we've got let's say it is green. This Eddie again. This Eddie. This Eddie. This Eddie. This Eddie. This Eddie. read this information. This is the original Voyager Blue movie, so named because it was built from blue filter images. It records Voyager's first, Voyager 1's approach during a period of over 60 Jupiter days. Notice the difference in speed and direction of the various zones of the atmosphere. Eddies. <coughs> Interacting currents, eddies, these like up, down, up, down ripples. <clears throat> and let's look at this one, which is much more recent. Really, we can see flowing this way, flowing this way in, <clears throat> in opposition and if you look over here, the flow, which it really has like a wider band, and it's running into resistance over here and going up through a narrowed channel. <clears throat> While this current is running into that and not able to go down because there's another flow going the opposite direction underneath it. So it goes up and abuts this and like pushes up as far as it can this boundary to create space for this current to then just eddy <clears throat> which then leads to an off shooting current this way so that this current can continue through this resistance of this larger bulk current that it's running into <clears throat> No, I'm saying, like, sure, it's water, but it's it's of a energy that it's behaving in a way where it's forming bands across the surface that are flowing. Actual current flows. It's not like it's the Earth magically has this characteristic in terms of like the actual like up down up down across down across here this whole band across feeding into there An eddy here. Something like this going on here where it goes over, down, and around, and back over kind of thing. It's where it like reshaped this area substantially from the process. 
because it was experiencing major like deluge currents of a nature similar to this i mean this doesn't have the large scale eddies at the pole that was happening so basically at the top we've got here a current that goes across just cuts across and then when it gets over here it keeps on going across just a continuous loop doop doop looping loop 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 <clears throat> and that feeds off into this loop and this loop and this loop <clears throat> which energetically couple the North Pole to the northern continents of North America, Europe, pretty much, well, and Western <coughs> Asia, but pretty much Europe. I don't, I don't know where the actual boundary where Europe Asia boundary <clears throat> what is the exact boundary so basically there yeah literally where the eddy was Europe isn't that crazy And like an attached piece over here that probably had like a smaller, smaller eddy maybe. Like I definitely was one here. I believe, just at a glance, I believe going this way because it's like pushing in this side and pushing in this side rather than vice versa. <clears throat> I cannot remember if that's is the details I arrived at, but just at a glance, so you can kind of see the nucleus type region there too now. So, like a peripheral some reason, I don't know. It's probably there the whole time, but. <clears throat> and then the, the southern region is a little different. I don't know what to make of it yet. I've been thinking about it terms of how it's structured and like how the earth is structured so one thing that i was thinking is kind of like um kind of like a divide anything beyond a certain point instead of being influenced by a polar current that was going westward the southern region is just a guess i haven't actually had a eddy that was going this way because <laughs> it's kind of position weird at like before the earth expanded I guess eastward effectively effectively going eastward regardless of what time in earth's history probably in terms of during the flood like once it became the pole it, it was rotating eastward while this one this eddy was rotating westward and then they just kind of shifted i don't know i mean it's almost like this by this rotating Maybe it wasn't up here. It actually led to like a divide. That's segmented by the torque pretty much. That's segmented Antarctica. Because Antarctica like blew, the earth blew its top basically when Antarctica broke apart from the other continents 
in terms of how Beetlejuice blew its top. Related there, too. Okay, um, I guess I'll finish this one in case it has ads. Does it have ads? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, what are you talking about? <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so what else told me is not like I figured that out. Thank you, whoever that was. I can just some random Twitter post. I was like, oh, that was... <sighs> I miss Adblock's capacity to do this. Oh. <laughs> I went to the bank yesterday to, to bot to deposit my ten year old shackles. Dude, it's like So what was what were we doing in Israel? <laughs> I was starting this long conversation. I'm like I just went there to see what was up pretty much. <laughs> I mean, I little did I know what I would find. Whoa. Yeah, anyway, um, apparently that doesn't commonly happen. Exchanging for foreign currency. Oh, yeah, I guess that is kind of weird. I'm not, I was even thinking about, like, just walking in with shackles, like the person at the counter is just like, this is perfectly ordinary behavior. <laughs> the fuck do you got shackles for, bro? <laughs> Are these real? <laughs> oh, shit, there's a bank, but it's still like, you know, Sarasota, Florida. <laughs> A retirement area, but well, maybe not fully retirement in Sarasota, but compared to other areas in Florida. But anyway, now I'm derailing. Um, so then, if we look at um, this, we got phase one, and I was thinking phase two over here this switch to phase two where it switches over in terms of where the position is of this current flow from over here This change, um, what was I saying? Like, it, re it, it relates to certain aspects of the process, essentially. Um, let me show what I'm getting at by going to Earth now. Like if we go here, okay, I'm basically saying, like, if you look at here, this arc that has like an actual end of the arc on both sides. This one's especially like the curl, but it has it over here. This arc, if you kind of just line it up, like a boop across this way and then go out like this way just go out from it initially it's kind of near Asia but then it starts to separate and it seems to basically point 
it's hard to like exactly I don't wanna like cheat essentially point at this area so it played a role seemingly in this. Possibly in this and the, the, this like diamond structure in there and just the decay of this the arc like the forming of the arc passing through here but then if we keep going the point is if we keep going it actually like points generally off of the coast of North America to right here which is one of the positions of the several positions that the sphere of Hawaii was ejected from the ammonite underneath Australia. The decay product of the fractal atom that an ammonite is, sorry, <laughs> was ejected over here, and then a current flow flowed up this way from that like jet stream that like points off of it in the magnetic anomaly map that then flowed this way. But then dot, 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 wraps around in a straight line, like forming a straight line, basically a propagation of energy along this way that ends up going in a straight line to here. But. This current was going a different way. It was going over that way on, onto here. But once the opening of the compass happened and the angle of the flow changed, it led to phase two where that current also went into this air, same area as this one. So there's this current going this way and this current going this way that merged to become one like large general current together. This one became part of that one. Although possibly with some degree of separation over like along the back side of here, between some boundary. It's crazy that I said this position <laughs> like long ago with no uh, no awareness of other details that we're looking at right now that this position was where this thing this thing once was and that this relates to all the deposits in Baja California, uh, or Baja BC deposits, but deposits of Baja California material and other material in British Columbia. There, I said it, I did it. I'm so proud of myself. Sometimes I, I can make sentences good. Uh, you, you really, Joe, you did it. You answered all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> What is this world we're in? <laughs> we're so proud of you. Oh, he did it.
Okay, I'm sorry. That was mean, I guess. I mean, whatever. Okay. So, another detail. That before I end this, I would like to at least try to capture in this video before I forget to mention it ever and then forget about it too. And don't at some point account for it is okay there's no way I forget this though yes, there it is this is from a paper that I probably can find but right now Let's just look at it. Maybe I'll try to link it in the description. Um, but Northern Hemisphere Reconstruction, assuming an Earth of approximately 65% of modern mean diameter, 400 million years radiometric dating. The area of the 10, okay, whatever, doesn't matter. Point is, this is what someone depicts the Earth pre-expansion essentially and curiously Australia is over here well Australia with Papua New Guinea basically at the North Pole like it's pretty much at the North Pole okay so think about this for a second when we say plates are moving around right the Earth is just plates moving around, and things are just kind of just arbitrarily moving around based on forces and things. Like it's, it's not so fine-tuned of a process that it would make sense that a point that was once at the North Pole, pretty much, okay, like right off of Australia, is now. Okay, underneath me, right here, equator, equator, do you think that's a coincidence? Because essentially it... What I'm saying is what happened. What I'm now realizing is just another detail I gotta be like incre inducing incredulity. <clears throat> I cannot believe this is dis this is unscientific rhetoric. Submit it to peer review. Look, you're going to need to go to school. You should get a focused degree in whatever it is we're talking about right now, even though you study several more things in way more depth. Ah, whatever. <laughs> I'm brown busy. <clears throat> so this is my idea, though. Is, as we mentioned before, um, at some point, Australia rotated and connected to the basically around uh, Baja, California, <clears throat> disconnected and rotated because an eddy was forming underneath it that physically rotated the, tr the overlying material to a point where it fractured away and rotated and reattached and when it reattached it did so this way even though it was attached more at the north pole which was more like crammed like this was over here and then it was attached like boop up in here maybe now that i think about it, it might have just been like right there like abutting this and then turned 
to down here. <coughs> At which point it was it reattached. Like basically a reaction occurred, like a new equilibrium where rotate, reestablish connection because the pressures were such that it was able to stabilize, but then the pressure built up again. And at that point, it really built up. <clears throat> and there was a lot going on around it. And then, then it actually was pushed away over here to the equator specifically. Like it was energetically switched to an equatorial position. Like a like some kind of imbalance, like one of those things that kind of ba balance and rock back and forth, but if it's like uneven weight distribution where it could basically take like a bottom point and turn and suddenly it's balanced on this other point and the previous bottom point balance point becomes like a equatorial belt position. <coughs> Stably, though, that that basically happened. This this became an equatorial position energetically. That was as far as the energy could move this system for some reason. I don't know how to explain it exactly. Some balance that that led to like a maybe a true transition, like a from a pole at the pole to a pole at the equator that leads to new poles where the, the old pole actually moves to the equator in a physical way. Maybe, I don't know. No, not that. Not what I was just thinking, but um, part of the process being though, this current pushing into it as well as this current pushing into it The one from over here, though, seems to have started around 140 million radiometric dating, uh, thereabouts. 145 really built up around 120 to 80, and then like exponentially built up around the KT boundary, just like as the Earth was actually breaking apart to like the final pressure build up as the earth fractured and many impact structures were formed from the pressure build up process breaking the continents apart at which point it could stress could be relieved Meanwhile, this one, pointing down, if we just kind of, I know this is maybe a little silly, there's this thing, pointing, like a boundary here, pointing down kind of there as well, and then generally through here, so it looks like, it looks like there's some relationship to this lobe and how it has the outlet current that way, but then also had an outlet current this way going across here that then ended up at some point, it seems possibly like directly like running into Antarctica pretty much, which is uh, why I drew these lines like it's kind of arc down here where over here they're much more straight i was thinking maybe some aspect of it was related to a current flow out this way that was just kind of pushing the interaction here at which point like some of the energy like fell down this this balance point and then between, actually cut between these. 
allowing for pressure buildup to flow out that way. Probably currents in opposition going like this way, this way, leading to that. If we can possibly expand this to the whole of the Earth. So we've got, in the past, I've said generally there is a current that goes um, like down generally this way. We'll just draw it generally. And here, across here as well, like dot, 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 dot. And then across, and just generally circles here. Let's just see if this kind of lines up. I might be drawing that too far out, like in certain parts, like this. This red cutting through converges here with this wrapping around whereas some of it seems to have maybe gone like along the edge here maybe then this current kind of went up this way where this current ran into it, and they then went this way. So down here, interesting, we've got points. Basically, we've got points of opposition leading to this kind of thing. Or then maybe down in like this. Let's see, we've got a current going out that way from this area, pushing out the arc here, leading to a current going this way. Don't. I'm thinking it just continues through here. I'm just thinking if this actually, like, because it's running into resistance here, it would seem like it should have bent more back here. And then once it got down here, to go on more like this, based on the, the flow patterns of this eddy. <clears throat> I'll just leave that for now. Let's look at the Indian Ocean some. It's definitely got the ridge. So then goes back. Uh, then goes back. So there's a current here that goes this way. Goes across. This way. Basically runs into this current, so it keeps going. And bringing some of it with it. And then runs into itself, really. Being fueled from here and here 
And here. Like spokes from the North Pole. And then maybe also here, like the other one, this one being another spoke, maybe. In some, uh, some sense from... <laughs> this is also n where these are, like if they're... It might have contributed to adding cutting capacity along here. Like this boundary coupled with this. Maybe propagating some additional pressure in that direction. Also, this, the trace of the track of Hawaii probably has something to do with that area, too. These axes, where all the axes were. Okay, guys. Uh, did I say everything? No, I did not. I did not. We missed something. We missed what I was getting at the whole time. <laughs> okay, hold up. Again. And, uh... <laughs> what the hell is this? This is what I'm claiming is what happened is that before the earth expanded this current was flowing into India as it was more folded over here There's folded in and attached over here, however exactly it is, but then with this area, as a result, folded over as well, <clears throat> whereas much more directly a backstop, like flowing directly at that location. <clears throat> And when it was doing that, this is what I suspect strongly. This area something of something like that was physically abutting here. And then when these phase changes happened, it didn't just move the current, it also moved a bunch of landmass that carried the arc of the of the current flow. Why would I say this? Because I was kind of looking around at the earth, like, wait a minute. Like, there's this. This thing I look at frequently. That's where certainly there was a spillway through here, but then I was like, wait a minute, we're finding things. So I looked over here, like, wait a minute, there's a spillway through here, too. Like a causeway pointing right at it. Like, effectively, I mean, across here. And going right there, right to boom. Right to boom. Precision point. 
Like the freaking <clears throat> right to boom, dude. Like the center of the arc. What's the odds? And it's got all this like flooded looking material here that just kind of arcs out. Like, I think this lands basically land slid out. So, like, India generally, the Himalayas did not exist, but it was being cut. The India itself was being cut away from this terrain that was abutting the back, like the northern section of India above it. Like, not, not Tibet. <laughs> like it was literally physically adjacent to it over here and then um, when it slid out of the way there was this release of pressure on India basically that's the key is, that's really why I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Okay, now I know why we're like, India moves so fast. And all these things about India that were, it's because it swung, this pressure was relieved. Where this current was flowing here, applying a pressure. And then I switched over here and was applying pressure here. So the pressure was relieved. And because it was pushing into it, it was essentially folding it more and more this way into resistance because the earth was a single landmass pretty much so it's not like it's able to push it very well but it's pushing it because there's pressure applied into it to a point where it's cutting an actual boundary of india a northern boundary that's a function of the arc produced by the wave of this current that's physically dividing in an arc because that's how it's interacting at which point when it swings in then it's got this pre-made like arc cuit arc cuit shape to its boundary that it just naturally interacts with the circumstances of like the whatever it's swinging into pretty much because something's there it's just not as under pressure um compressing it though uplifting because of the compression taking what's spread out and just compressing it because it folded into it and then the space that was uh, emptied instead is over here unrealized and then australia was attached to here with that attached to like a wherever the exactly the let's see can we do this australia here generally with philippines attached to it there and then pretty much up to there, maybe. It's so hard to say because some of this might have like fanned out. Like, I think there's some fanning out, widening of this area that happened. Oh, I totally forgot about the ohm sign, Gary. What's up? What's up, Gary? I totally forgot about the ohm sign. Definitely something to think about. I still, I got, I can't talk about it now though. I got a bed soon. But there's definitely there's a, a ohm sign. Maybe I can just kind of cut it out. 
is from Gary. I'm like, wow, there's an om sign. Good, good fucking call, dude. He said, off of the Himalayas. And I just, I just kind of looked at it here, and I'm like, dude, you're fuck. I see what you're saying. Like maybe, maybe across here actually. Like a three, and then over here. So let's look up. Let's look up. Home symbol. I guess we'll just talk about it at this point. <laughs> I can't talk about Devin. Okay. It is cool. It is fucking cool. So what am I doing? I'll f remember that some other time. <laughs> Circle there. I was thinking there. And maybe like generally wrapping around there. So like that. And then generally just attaching through there to kind of have that. And then maybe over there, there, or there, un unclear. There's like an arc there. I, I don't know. At that point. Uh, and then uh, frequently it's shown in like this kind of way, or like this kind of way, with just like a petals kind of thing. I didn't really look at for this. We see one there potentially, but it might be a little close. I don't know. There might be petals, uh, like specifically able to be pointed to. Maybe that one is a little cheating. <laughs> Whatever. There we go. There's some petals. Maybe not this first one, but. <laughs> That's cool. In the in the midst of these eddies, mind you, this one is essentially where this uh, pink perp or pink fuchsia color one is is where the ohm symbol is. So it's is a product of an eddy in circumstances relating to like this cross current, all this stuff going on that maybe are more like women ohm symbol manifest than other places. Uh, ohm Parvat is worth mentioning right now. Literally. Like, how cool is reality? <laughs> uh, it just makes my eyes tear up. Oh my god. <laughs> so maybe that was at an eddy position. We've definitely related... Um, Several mountains to Dammit Arcoon. I think Om Parvat was one of them. Maybe less of a focus. It's, def it's definitely one of them directly across from Mount Kailash. Definitely one of them that we've talked about. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. I mean, is I have not looked at the technical details of this specific area to really piece it together with more clarity. But the general gist, I feel quite confident about. It's probably related to the like Shalagram Ammonite structure up here going on. As well, I wonder, that actually, it's nucleus. Ugh. Like if we go draw a line, like a, through the center of this, through the center of this. Or the, the boundary, I guess, of that one points more there. Boundary of that one points at the center from the center of this one.
But if this area is where the chakras are, then we've got a current coming down from above through the chakra region of this ammonite-esque structure that fractally occurred in the Tarim Basin region and surrounding, where another current is coming Hmm, maybe, maybe this current ended up going up. It went down underneath, but then at some point it like switched over as well, like stage one, stage two over here. That seems possible. Let's think about this. If this current if this current is going this way underneath this current and then this cur phase one current maybe actually maybe it was like a phase one current was more over here and maybe a phase two current was more up above it. Possibly, but they're probably going on simultaneously. My thought is, is it's like a switch though, like this current reaches down to here. Which means it extends past this current. So it suddenly is on the other side of this current. This was going over this way. Now it's on the other side. in the phase two. Which would mean, like, this would be like, wait a minute, where are we going? Where are we going? Like, do we go this way? But this is like, I guess forcing it that way. But then the thing is, is simultaneously, I guess possibly, it seems, is that other current coming through here this current is also cutting it off. Cuts it off. Blocks it over here. And just forces it out this way. So it turns down this way maybe and starts bending. Maybe that's when the, like it kind of forces it over here. When did this happen? Uh, Is it the Red Sea? 25. That's, that's in the right time frame. This is the Red Sea, right? I'm not freaking... Not... Look, it's 2.40 in the morning. I don't really care sometimes about details like the name. <laughs> okay, it's the Red Sea. I knew it all along. See? I was just testing you guys to make sure you knew that it was that. That it wasn't just me. That's... Okay. But maybe. It, 30 million. That's kind of like post KT boundary. KT boundary is probably about when this switch was going off. Boop. 
Boop, swinging in Himalayas, uplifting around just after the KT boundary. Is when they start to uplift left to right, where it's hitting left to right first. From just the, I guess the opposite swinging in or whatever. I don't, I don't know if I did that right. I don't know if the compass can be used for that in the same way as over here. So this would have been up there, and maybe just some segment of this somewhere over here, maybe in in the, like added another another notch basically, so that this corner doesn't like really quite connect to where it once did over here. If it's attached to here. Is this, I'm gonna have to research this much more thoroughly. This might end up being a temporarily uh, rough draft. <laughs> rough draft of some thoughts. We'll see. It's gonna take some evidence to really work through. And I don't know if I feel like it of late. Ugh done so much it's ridiculous it's so ridiculous people don't know that they lived the last 10 years of their life while I basically have been researching most of the time I mean, that's living my life, but, like, I quit my life. I literally dropped everything I was doing. I dropped everything. People don't know what the hell that's like. Especially not people in, like, sh good positions at the time. <laughs> like, oh, my life is actually pretty sad. I'm making a hundred grand a year. That sounds like I am set. Good to know. I quit. I got something else to do. What do you got to do? I'll be ignored by people who don't want to listen to anyone other than people that affirm what they already believe. Yeah, they call themselves scientists, but, you know, it's, they're humans. That's life. Peace out.